Yo, what's up Giants fans, Hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's No Name back at it again with another Giants update vid. First and foremost, thank you all for tuning into the premiere of the How the New York Giants Will Win the Super Bowl vid that I, uh, I think I premiered at like 8 last night. Thank you all for tuning in, thank you all for checking it out. One of those other videos that it wasn't technically subscriber selected. But as shown in the beginning, it was definitely, I made it based off of a comment that one of you guys made. And the comment got stuck in my head, so I made it into a vid. Definitely spent a lot of time editing it, so that's why it looks so good. Um, but let's get into um, this uh, quick update video about the Giants. So they finally released a date, or at least have set a tentative date for when they want to start the 2020 training camp. Now, there's no 2020 training camp schedule or there's no type of, you know, week by week itinerary released yet, which in a normal situation and a normal off season, we probably would have gotten those already. And in a normal situation, the NFL teams, um, I think they report to training camp like two weeks before the preseason um, actually starts. With this right here, it's currently set for July 28. I think that's only probably a week, a little bit over a week the preseason starts obviously because of the um covid19 pandemic and i'm getting this off a of giant's wire here I'm gonna read some quotes it says espn's adam schefter reports that 28 nfl teams must report to training camp on july 28 47 days before week one kickoff for those playing on sunday and 48 days before week one kickoff for those playing on monday of course the giants we open up on monday night football against the steelers and the reason it's 28 teams instead of all 32 is because the um and the teams that are left out would be the kansas city chiefs the houston texans dallas cowboys and pittsburgh steelers the chiefs and texans they opened their regular season on thursday september 10th while the cowboys and steelers were playing the hall of fame game which i think the hall of fame game might even i don't know i don't watch it every year so i'm not sure of the schedule but i'm pretty sure it happens before preseason preseason or during that time of preseason so they're on shorter time the um cowboys and the steelers and the Chiefs and Texans, they got a little bit little bit more extra time there. So then the official quote I think from Schefter is, whereas teams used to be required to report to training camp 15 days before their preseason opener, 28 NFL teams now must report on July 28th, which is 47 days before week one of the regular season, league sources said. The teams playing Sunday, September 13th must report to camp 47 days before their opener, and the team scheduled to play Monday, September 14th, must report 10, 48 days before that game. So, as I mentioned before, it's all a tentative date. Like anything here is scheduled to change, or I mean subject to change, um, given if the situation becomes worse than what, it was, than what it was before, or if it becomes better. If it becomes better, I assume they'll just go back to their um, the regularly scheduled programming, which is training camp begins two weeks before the preseason happens and of course this is all up to the NFL and the NFL's Players Association which I'm not sure um, if they're even really discussing it seriously or anything like that because we haven't gotten any news on anything like this now this is just training camp so we have a tentative day for training camp we still got to think about for the Giants um rookie mini camp and then I think OTAs if those are still even happening rookie mini camp and OTAs I think both would have been completed by now um, or at least at the very least, OTAs would have been near completion. Rookie minicamp for sure, that happens almost immediately after the draft. It's like 10 days, I think. The rookies come in and the Giants have 10 rookies, so we have a large class coming in. You know, they get a little bit of practice in, they get to know the playbook a little bit, and then OTAs, which are voluntary by the way, OTAs happen, and OTAs happen for about a week, or maybe a week and a half, not too long also, and then they take another break and they come back for training camp. Both of those, are kind of just part of the NFL offseason now and players are used to that regimen they're used to starting you know slowly in a sense you know you start off a little easy with um, OTAs and before you get into the actual training camp it's kind of like to ease their bodies back into it and I'm not sure how this is gonna affect them physically because you, you know you don't want to throw the body and the muscle into there and then you you know you risk an injury which has happened before I mean there's been injuries in OTAs before the voluntary workouts when the mandatory workouts come and that's where the real training happens that's where the Giants actually have to go hard and Joe Judge has been on record saying he wants to play you know with pads and whatnot he doesn't want to practice without pads that much because he wants his players to get used to that feeling injuries in my opinion it might be a pessimistic lookout but injuries would be bound to happen because 
not everybody has that home gym like the you know the, the biggest quarterbacks in the NFL right now that are being paid hundreds of millions of dollars not every NFL player has that home gym and has the facilities to help them keep in shape during the offseason so that's the kind of the news on the OTAs mini camp training camp side of things I've been wondering when Giants facilities might open hopefully that date stays the same and nothing gets worse and the next piece of news that I wanted to talk about was Darnay Holmes, our fourth round cornerback pick, was named the Pac-12 Tom Hansen Conference Medal Award recipient. Now he was one of two players, I believe, with the other one being another UCLA Bruin Madison, uh, I might be mispronouncing this name, Kosian, was also named the recipient. And this is the official quote. Holmes was a stalwart in the football program's defensive backfield, starting 33 of his 35 games, played over three seasons. He led the team in interceptions at the end of each campaign, totaling eight. Holmes twice returned interceptions for touchdowns and added a kickoff return score. He earned honorable mention acclaim from Pac-12 in 2018 and 2019. Off the field, the African American Studies major has qualified for the UCLA Athletic Director's Honor Roll four times, spring 2018, fall 2018, Fall 2019 and winter 2020. Holmes, a native of Pasadena, California, and graduate of Calabasas High School, has also given back to the communities that helped shape him. The Darnay Holmes Mentorship Program, part of the Future Elite Academy of Westlake Village, California, helps guide young people through obstacles in their athletic journeys. He was also fundamental in bringing the Pasadena Giants youth football program to his hometown. And this is something that's um actually very true. When I first heard of Darnay Holmes, which was I think back at the Senior Bowl when he was drafted by the Giants, first thing I did was I went to his Twitter and his Instagram pages and one thing I noticed is that unlike other players where it's kind of littered with him doing workouts or you know maybe just his daily life in the off season, his social media pages are filled with the two organizations mentioned, the Darnay Holmes um mentorship program where he's talking about helping these young kids and helping them grow their athletic careers and even helping them off the field and the Pasadena youth football program that's all that I saw on his social media pages so he's very active in his communities he's very active with giving back to it and of course the honor roll mentions are something that is no surprise to us we knew this guy was smart he was somebody that graduated UCLA in like two and a half years he said that he picked up chess because he saw some random people playing it and he thought it was fun and he like basically became really good at it in a week. Darnay Holmes, definitely very well deserving of this Tom Hansen medal. Um, it just basically spells good things for the Giants. I mean, it's looking more and more like we got a really good player in the fourth round. Gettleman uh, is no stranger to this. Last year, we got great players in the fifth round in Slayton and potentially Connolly. Uh, the late round picks are looking better and better. And remember, you got Hall of Fame guys like Deion Sanders saying he could be the best cornerback in this draft and nobody knows it yet. So hopefully it does play out that way. And with the DeAndre Baker situation, even if DeAndre gets completely off, I still suspect he's gonna miss some time, whether it's because Roger Goodell, you know, being Roger Goodell and suspending him for a couple of weeks, or if it's because he's missed so much time getting to know the playbook that he's gonna need it to make it up and he won't be starting. Darnay Holmes is gonna need to be on his top game and it's great to see that he's already a top player in that sense. So let me know what you guys think, just two pieces of information that I want to get out to y'all with the training camp and with Holmes giving this award. Uh, put your thoughts and comments down below and I'm out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.